Today I'm going to be showing you how to implement version control in Microsoft Fabric and Power BI. Welcome back to my video series where I'm currently studying for the DP600 exam by making a video on every single topic on the study guide. Today we're going to be talking about version control and how to implement it. And I'm going to be showing you how to do it in my, fa my Fabric trial capacity. But first, what is version control? Version control is a system of backing up your code and other objects um, as they change over time. That way, if you make a mistake or mess up, you can go ahead and you can revert back to the previous reason. It's also great for working on teams as one person can make a change and then that change can be available to all the others on the team via the repo. All right, so let's go ahead and let's jump in. All right, so here I am in my Power BI backslash fabric workspace. If I go over here, I've created a test workspace, and this test workspace is in my Fabric trial capacity. So I can go ahead and I can enable version control. To enable version control, you hit this workspace settings, and then you go over here and you click Git integration. By default, you're going to be able to see Azure DevOps, and this GitHub is going to be grayed out. If you want to use GitHub, which I'm going to be using for this video, you need to enable it in the admin portal. So if you click this little gear icon right here and then go down to admin portal and then search for Git, uh, you can go over and you can enable it here by clicking enable. There's also some other specific settings, but once you go ahead and enable this, that GitHub option will be not grayed out. All right, so let's go back into our test workspace and let's go workspace settings and let's go back to Git integration. I am first going to have to create a uh, connection to GitHub. So if I go ahead and I click GitHub, it'll show me that there aren't any accounts connected to this workspace. I can add account by clicking this add account button and then it'll pop up and it'll ask me for a few things. It'll ask me for my display for the display name of the, the account the GitHub personal access token, and then the repository URL. In order to get these things, we're going to have to go into GitHub. So let's go into GitHub. All right, so here I am in GitHub. The first thing, and this is my GitHub right here, the first thing I am going to go ahead and do is I'm going to create a new uh, repository for me to store this in. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to click this little plus button and then I'm going to click new repository. And I'm going to name this repository in my test workspace, right? Because that's what it is. And when I'm creating uh, workspace or repositories for my workspace, I typically like to keep them the same name as the workspace. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click this create repository. Okay. It's now going to give me uh, various options to add in my first file. For now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ignore this. I'm then going to go over here to my icon. I'm going to click this, and then I'm going to go down here to settings. Once I'm in this setting, I'm going to scroll all the way down, and I'm going to go to these this button right here that says developer settings, and then I'm going to go right here to personal access tokens and then tokens. I am now going to click this button right here to generate a token. I'm not going to show you this part as I don't want to reveal any kind of personal information, um, but it will ask you a few different things. Um, I'm going to generate a new classic token. All right, be right back with my token. Okay, I'm back and I'm now back in Power BI and I'm now back in here and I'm going to create my connections. I'm going to go GitHub. And then I'm going to fill in that token and the repository I just created. One second while I go ahead and fill that in. Okay, here we are with everything filled in. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click this Add button. And it's now going to create the repository. All right, here I am now with um, connected to Git. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click this Connect button. Uh, what I can then do is I can then uh, set a default branch. So this is really useful if you're currently building out a deployment pipeline in Power BI. So like if you have one development workspace and one production production workspace, you can set your branch as development and it'll sync all of your development stuff. And then you can set your branch of your production workspace to production and 
it'll go ahead and it'll sync it there. And then when you use it, your deployment pipeline, it'll move your objects and switch your repos automatically. But in this case, I don't have that. So I am going to go ahead and I am going to um, create my first branch. Uh, certainly, currently we don't have any branches on this. So I'm gonna go back over here to um, GitHub and I'm gonna need to add a file in order to create a branch. So I'm gonna just do that by just uploading an existing file. Um, there's other people that are much more skilled with GitHub that I'm sure there's a 10x different way, but here I am, here I've got a thumbnail for an old video. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit commit right here. All right, we now have one branch and that branch is main. So now if I go back over here to Power BI and let's go ahead and I will go branch and I might have to refresh this to get it to pick up. So I'm gonna hit this refresh right here. I'm gonna go back to my workspace settings Go back to Git integration, go back to GitHub. I'm gonna hit connect right here. My branch, there it is. Now there's my main, my Git folder. And if we roll over here, we can see what it says, but it's essentially the folder where you wanna store the workspace structure. I'm gonna title this Power BI um, Workspace and I'll hit connect and sync. Okay. So it'll recognize that I don't have that folder currently created in my repository and I will go right here and I will go create and sync. Okay, I now have this button up here called source control. And what this source control is gonna do is it's gonna tell me if I have any changes that I haven't synced back to the GitHub repo. I can also switch my branch right here and then I can also view information about how I'm connected right here. So I'm gonna create a new item in this case, I'm going to create a data pipeline, and it's going to be an empty data pipeline, and I'm going to save it as pipeline one. What you'll notice is that after this pipeline is created, let's give it a second here. I will go ahead and I'll hit run, right, and it'll successfully run my pipeline. We now go back, we now have this pipeline created. If you notice, it now picked up right here, this source control, and I now have a red button right here, and then I have a git status of uncommitted. If I click right here, it'll show me what changed, right? So in this case, it's saying, hey, pipeline one was added, and I can add a commit message of pipeline one was added. And I can go ahead and I can hit commit, okay? And I'll go ahead and I'll save that into my GitHub. So let's go take a look at what this looks like from a GitHub perspective. If I now go back to GitHub and I now go back over here, I now have a folder that is Power BI Workspace. And if I go in here, I now have a folder that's called Pipeline 1 Data Pipeline. And if I click into here, I can see the code that actually makes up the pipelines. In this case, right, it's unchanged. But if I go back into Power BI and I go back into my pipeline and then I go ahead and I, you know, maybe I add in a notebook reference right here. And I go ahead and I hit save and it's gonna want me to select a notebook and I don't have any notebooks in this workspace. So maybe we will go ahead and we'll add a trigger instead. Okay, and here we are. So I went ahead and I removed, I, added the trigger, I removed the notebook connection. And now if we go back into our test workspace, um, you'll see we now have a reflex here of unsupported and then our pipeline is unchanged. So you might be wondering, okay, like what's that unsupported uh, button mean? Well, only certain items are currently supported for GitHub. So that's data pipeline, light lake houses, notebooks, Paginated reports, report semantic models, Spark job definitions, Spark environment, and warehouses. If you are currently developing, um, <clears throat> developing in in a development environment, and you have an unsupported item, you will actually have to manually move those. So what I tend to do is I actually tend to work with a three workspace environment. So I have my development environment connected to one branch in version control. I have my production and environment connected to another branch in version control, and then I have a single workspace for all of my unsupported items. Um, but yeah, anyway, I don't wanna to get too far off topic talking about deployment pipelines, but the two are closely linked. So 
if you're interested in learning more about that, you should probably go ahead and Google. As always, all any of the resources that I use to prep for this video will be down in the video description. Uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing how to connect GitHub and Microsoft Fabric, and thank you for watching. I hope you have a good Sunday morning, or at least that's what, it, what time it is here.